Hello and welcome to part 2 of a tutorial series on blocking functions in the Python version 2.7 API in Visual Components. Blocking functions halt the execution of a script until a specific event occurs or a certain condition is met. To refer to these functions from the help documentation, visit the Python API section and under VC script, we can find the details on the delay condition and trigger condition. The delay function pauses the execution of a script for a specified amount of time and can be used, for example, to pause logic during processing time. The condition function waits until a specified condition is met. And the trigger condition method waits for a specific event to occur, such as a signal. These functions are used to move a servo to a specified position, and the script execution is paused until the servo reaches that position. When following any tutorial, check the lesson on the Visual Components Academy, and if the download files option appears, you can download the example files. In this tutorial, Paul will continue to explain the use of trigger condition and servo movements. So let's start by selecting this feeder first and going to the product creator here on the right hand side and swapping the interval for to 20 seconds from 5 seconds. After that, we can go to the modeling tab on the top left corner of the screen. Within the modeling tab, we want to select this conveyor tracking base and go to its Python scripts here on the left hand side. In this case, we would like to convert this whole Python script to be more signal control. So in our case, we are now waiting for a signal that appends a product into a Python list that we have named as Q. And then we are simply waiting for something to fill the queue. And what I would like to do is to have this condition simply wait for a signal. I would like to simplify the code and I would like to have the whole code controlled by signals. This will allow me to have a bit better external control with systems like PLCs. So what happens here is that the cylinder enters the sensor frame. It waits here on the condition until something has filled the queue. Then we will stop the conveyor, wait for 10 seconds, and then re-enable the conveyor. We also pop the queue. It is very important to pop the queue because otherwise this condition will always pass. Now let's simplify the code. So as said before, we should remove redundant code. So let's start by going to this define on signal and writing pass there. We're not really using this event function outside examples. Then we can also remove this def define my function. We can also remove this variable called q. We're also not using component signal. We are not using sensor. Now let's also remove some redundant code from the own run. And now what we can do next is to also swap the value inside this lambda. So now we are waiting for Q, which does not really exist. So instead of Q, we should be waiting for something that turns into true. And in our case, it would be the Boolean signal. So let's write that in. And what's important to remember here is to write also dot value, because otherwise you will be waiting for an object instead of what's actually stored in that object. Now we are hitting the same problem as the queue that we are not popping. So we will always pass this condition. So something needs to toggle this boolean signal to false. And there's two different ways of doing that. This is one of the ways of doing it. So I can simply write bool signal dot value equals to false. And the other way of doing it is to write bool signal dot signal, and then we are putting something inside the brackets that will denote what will be its next value. 
and instead of saying out loud, I believe it would be a lot easier if I show it. So something like that. This is almost the same thing, except if you do it like this, you will also send a trigger or an event for the whole system to tell that this boolean signal has changed its value to false. If you do it uh, with the earlier way, it will toggle its value or change its value to false in a silent way. And it's easier to again show what I mean. So let's first restart the simulation and let's showcase what happens here on this signal by writing some prints. In normal cases, when we have linked this boolean signal to the Python script, this on signal event will trigger. And what this sensor frame over here in the middle within this conveyor tracking base is also doing is that it is toggling the boolean signal. So when a cylinder enters this specific sensor frame, we will get this output panel message. It will also write something when it leaves because it will then toggle it to false. Now, interestingly, if I write here in the very beginning, full signal dot value equals to true or false, this on signal will not trigger. Now, if we do want to have a Python script trigger its own on signal event, we would need to do it similarly like in this fashion. And here you will get that signal event immediately. The other way of doing this without the condition would be to use trigger condition. And in the case of trigger condition, we also do not even need to remember to toggle the signal. So how the condition works is that it acts like a toggle, while the trigger condition acts like, well, as the name would imply, a trigger. So let's swap this whole system into a trigger condition instead. And now we don't, again, even need to remember to set the signal to false afterwards. Because once the cylinder leaves, the system will be waiting here on the trigger condition until it gets a trigger that somebody sets this value now when it's waiting on this line to true. And this again begs the question which one is better, and that depends again on the user's own implementation. Do you want to have a toggle that you will handle? Or will, do you want to have a trigger instead? Now let's actually use servos. So what I want to do next is to have this uh, conveyor tracking base or the ball over here move along at the same speed as the cylinders that come here on the sensor frame. So let's start by having something move first. Let's also check the properties of the conveyor tracking base and here on the left hand side we can see that it already has something called tracking speed, tracking distance and so on. Let's make use of the tracking distance first. So there's there's two different ways of obtaining this value over here which is 400 millimeters. One would be the right comp dot tracking distance and the other would be to get the object over here and then asking for its value. We're going to do both in this exercise. So let's start by getting the object itself. So let's start by writing some variable and then writing comp, which is again get component. So when I write this comp, it's the same thing as I would click here. And if I want to move downwards, I can use the object notation of dot, and then I can either write the tracking distance or I can write get property it's a method I need to put brackets and then inside the name that I'm trying to find or the property that I'm trying to find 
and it is case sensitive. In my case, it is tracking distance. Next, what we need to do is to write something here instead. So instead of delay, we can consume time by, for example, telling the server to move. And in order to make the server move, we already have the server over here, and we are simply giving it a move command. And then how far do we want to move it? And in our case, we already have the distance over here. And as same with this boolean signal.value, we don't want to get the actual property, we want to get the value behind it. Now let's save and click on play. So now the system at least moves, or rather this conveyor tracking base moves. And if you're very curious, you can also swap this trigger condition to a normal condition and click on play. But I would suggest saving before you do that. You will get very interesting results. So now in our case, we saw that the ball moved, but the cylinder stopped. So we don't really need to stop the conveyor anymore because we do want the cylinder to move at the same time as the ball. So that would be enough. We will remove the stoppings. In our case, the ball moves at the same speed, but it never really resets. So we need to tell it to reset after uh, the trigger condition has been passed. And the command for that is servo move immediate. And we will be giving it a zero value to tell it where to move. So basically back to its beginning. And once something comes to the sensor frame itself, the ball should reset to its original position. Let's speed up the simulation a bit. And here we can see that the ball moved back. You can set the move immediate to be after the server move or after the trigger condition. Any logical place is okay. Now, for the final part, we do want to make use of the tracking speed. For example, if the conveyor changes its speed, the ball should follow. For example, if I now click on the conveyor, and here on the right hand side, I select the conveyor speed to be 400. Unfortunately, the ball does not really move along with that. As you can see, it's twice slower. So what we can do here is to um, tie the speed of the servo to the speed of the conveyor. So first, let's go through its joints. So joint is a list in our case, meaning that it has these uh, harder brackets. And we need to target the correct join, which is, well, the zero joint or the first one in the index. And this one has something called maximum speed or max speed. And we can set this to be equal to something. In the case of this convert tracking base, we actually have this parent component over here. So we can go through its own parent component to find the conveyor that it is attached to. And once I have written comp.parent component, it is the same thing as I would have clicked here on the conveyor itself. And within this component graph, I would like to find something called conveyor speed. And we can use the same notation of get property to obtain the value, or we can do it the other way, which is by dot and then the name directly conveyor speed. Now, as you can see, the conveyor tracking ball follows at the same speed. That would be all for this tutorial.